Over the past few months, I've noticed a kind of alarming trend. And that's the popularity of this idea of a clean slate text message or email or letter. Now, I've never done a video on this topic, I've never written an article, or even done a podcast episode on it, but I've always kind of thought the clean slate text message was dangerous. And now that it's becoming more popular, I'm gonna argue why I think it's one of the most dangerous things that you can do that can ruin your chances of getting your ex back. Now, speaking of chances of getting your ex back, if you're sitting there and wondering what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back right here, right now, I've got great news for you. On our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com, I put together a special quiz that's designed to basically answer this question for you. It's a simple two minute quiz and all you have to do if you wanna take it is simply look in the video description of this video and click on it. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can answer all the questions and it will give you an approximate idea of what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back in your situation. So what is the clean slate text message? Well, simply put, if you act crazy or upset or get into an argument with your ex, the thinking is that you send a text message or you write a letter or you send an email apologizing for your behavior, thus wiping the slate clean. And often I've seen experts recommending that they do this clean slate wipe right before a no contact rule. But I kind of think as is often when it comes to this area of expertise, we have a situation where the blind are leading the blind. I've been doing this for over a decade and when I first heard about this idea of apologizing, I was a little taken aback but ultimately decided, hey, it's worth a try. Maybe I'll start recommending for my clients to do this. So in the early iteration or the early stages of me creating the website Ex-Boyfriend Recovery, I was kind of a big proponent of the clean slate text. But when results started coming back, when I heard from people who were actually implementing it, and what's interesting is if you go to some of the other peers that I have and look at the video comments, you'll see people who are implementing these text messages are getting pretty poor results. Now, what does that mean? How do we define a poor result? Well, simply put, it means they're sending a clean slate text and basically the ex is saying, sayonara, have a good luck with your life, or simply not responding at all. Not very helpful, especially if you're trying to get an ex back. But why? Why is it failing so much? Well, over the past decade, we've learned there are six primary reasons for why the clean slate text message is bound to fail. Reason number one, it uses words as opposed to actions. Now I hate to use this analogy, but when it comes to men, it can also sometimes fit. My wife and I have been recently watching that TV show, The Dog Whisperer. Basically, it's this guy who comes in and he's amazing at training really, really sort of bad dogs dogs that people are afraid of. Now what always struck me is I always thought that when a dog is acting bad, you kind of stand strong and raise your voice. But what's interesting is he doesn't do that at all. Instead of using words, he uses action. He comes up, he disciplines the dog, maybe by touching it a little bit. He never harms the dog, but the important part here is he emphasizes actions as opposed to words. Now, it's amazing to see the results that he gets with this method, actions as opposed to words. If you're interested in getting an ex back, you're going to find that I'm a very action-oriented person. That's how I game plan, that's how I campaign for this particular difficult situation. I'm almost never a huge proponent of using words before actions. Actions like the no contact rule are almost better if you just go right into them. Now, speaking of which, one of the biggest sort of issues I have with the clean slate text message is other people saying that you should wipe the slate clean before you jump into a no contact rule, but we have found the opposite is actually true. It's way more important that you don't give your ex any warning before you jump into this no contact period. By wiping the slate clean, you almost kind of put attention to the fact that you're about to implement a no contact rule. That's a no-no. Reason number two, the clean slate text message makes you feel better, not your ex. 
This might be a little hard for you to understand, being that maybe you're a more forgiving person than your ex or other people out there, but generally speaking, it's going to take a lot more to make someone forget something like a breakup than a simple letter or text message. In fact, oftentimes, I think the only thing a clean slate text message does is makes you feel better. Makes you feel better about you acting crazy or you saying this certain thing. Now the funny part is that totally goes against the premise of what the clean slate text message is supposed to do. It's supposed to make your ex feel better. It's supposed to sort of reset your relationship, but it almost never works out that way. Your ex maybe gets this letter or this text message and scoffs at the idea because now you're bringing it up again. You, you just can't let it go. You reinforce that sort of perception they have of you. In the end, maybe it does make you feel better, but it doesn't make your ex feel better. It doesn't make them feel worse, just maybe potentially makes them a little bit angrier. Reason number three, timing for apologies needs to be right. Now, don't get me wrong. With the clean slate text message, it almost seems like I'm taking the stance that apologizing for your behavior is wrong, that you should never do it. I don't agree with that. I think there's always a time for apologies. In fact, I like apologies, but I like them when the time is right. The clean slate text message basically has you apologizing when your ex is in their most emotional and angry state. Timing really matters here, and also the way in which you deliver this apology matters. The clean slate text message, or email or letter has you doing it in this sort of indirect way. I believe apologies are much more impactful when they come directly. Maybe the best time to apologize is right before you are guaranteed to get your ex back or right after you've gotten them back, not before you've tried anything. Reason number four. As I said before, it warns your ex before the no contact rule. Now, I briefly touched on this concept in a earlier reason, but I feel like it's such an important thing that I need to reiterate it again. The clean slate text message, letter, or email warns your ex before you implement a no contact rule. I just got through telling you why timing is important. Well, the timing of the no contact rule is also important. Rather than giving your ex like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do to you. I'm going to apologize for my behavior and say, you know what, I think we need to stop talking for 30 days. You'll find it's not going to be anywhere near as effective as just simply taking the action of implementing a no contact rule. Not only does it kind of throw your ex back, but it makes them pay attention to you more. And that's what you want if you want to get your ex back. Reason number five. Apologies need to be direct, not indirect. Again, I just said this in an earlier reason, but it's again such an important thing that I feel I need to reinforce it again. Timing matters when it comes to apologizing to an ex, but also an indirect apology really doesn't have as much oomph as a direct one. Now, what's the difference? Well, have you ever gotten a written apology from someone? Chances are it really didn't change your opinion very much of the situation. Sometimes it can, there's always outliers, but most of the time it's not going to be as impactful as you apologizing in person for the behavior. But it's interesting, and this brings us up to the final reason. Reason number six, sometimes you shouldn't apologize. Here's one thing I've learned in the decade I've been doing this, and it's the fact that usually when people are upset, there's a reason for why they're upset. Usually you act crazy or you act angry because your ex has done something to make you feel that way. And sometimes it's not okay to reinforce that negative behavior. You're kind of letting them win if you think about it when you're just acting like a normal person would act. Now in your heart of hearts, you'll know when you've stepped over the line. You shouldn't have to apologize for something that your ex thinks is wrong when you don't feel is wrong. It's okay to have a little emotional outburst every once in a while. That's almost to be expected when it comes to breakups. If that's all that happened, there's no need to apologize for that behavior because guess what? I've been doing this for a long time and almost every single person I've ever met that's gone through a breakup has had an emotional outburst of some kind. Sometimes in private, sometimes in public, and sometimes just directly over the phone or something. Don't apologize for behavior that is completely within social norms. That's almost like saying, hey, you, my ex, can get away with treating me poorly. 
that's not what we're about here and you do not want to reinforce that type of behavior. But again, in order for you to truly get what we're going for here, you have to be honest with yourself. You will know when you've stepped over the line and need to apologize for something, but all I'm saying is don't send the apology in a clean slate text message. Send it when you've gotten your ex back or are just super close to getting them back. And again, you'll know when that time comes. Hey, thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, but more importantly, stop everything you're doing and take our X Recovery Chances Quiz. It's a simple two minute quiz that you can easily take by looking in the video description below and clicking the link we've placed there for you. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I'm always in your debt.